is because he lives and I can face tomorrow because Jesus is alive and well I'm a fears of God Because he lives Sing it everybody
understand Faith on heaven Heaven stable land There is a higher place your love light shine.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want everybody to stand up in this place. And I want you to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Tradition is plain and simple of the devil. This is not Hollywood. This is a time when the children of God come together and lift up the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter whether you're in South Africa, in Europe, or in Houston, Texas. God hears every utterance out of your mouth. When you begin to lift up the name of Jesus, it causes God's power to explode in your life. It causes God's healing power to fall. It causes God's delivering power to fall. It causes everything that Jesus represents. It's time that the world knows that God is alive, that he doesn't create a dead race. He creates a race alive under God, filled with his presence, filled with his power. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all of the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with thanksgiving. Make a joyful noise unto him with a song. Hallelujah. shake and tremble praise God I never know what I'm going to do because God never tells me he told me he would heal my voice by the time I started singing I said praise God some people watching believe you can't be loud for God if the devil had a handbook of how to praise God it would go like this Praise God in a whisper. Praise God with your lips closed. Don't open your mouth wide. Never shout before God because it's not polite. Never clap your hands. Never dance. God's too old to have rhythm. God doesn't like you to dance. But the Bible says, dance before the Lord, all of the earth. It says clap. It says shout. It says make a joyful noise. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's magnify the Lord. Blessed be the name that's above every name. Say, Jesus, we praise you. We lift up our voice to magnify you. We forget everything else. We concentrate on you. We put our energy to you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Now, God, let your power fall in this place. Let people be lit with your fire. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost begin to explode in the lives of everyone. Go first to the deadheads. Get a hold of them. Put a fire inside of them. For you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. The Bible says we are a holy nation under God. We have become a new race on the earth, praise God. There's neither black nor white, nor one nation against another. We have become the nation of God on the earth. Jesus is alive in us. He makes you and I one with another. There can be no division. There's not Baptists and Methodists and Presbyterians. There's one nation, one nation, one nation under God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Say, for he is worthy to be praised. 
the Lord. Is that as loud as you can clap? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is doing so many new things in his kingdom that it's sometimes hard to keep up. Did you know God's the only one in the universe that is always hip? <laughs> He's in a constant perpetual state of hipness. He's new every morning. The only way you stay hip is by getting with God and listening to what he says and then following what he says and then listening again and then following what he says. Tradition is things that are usually born out of what God was doing before. God's always hip, man. God's always going to be doing new things. Don't ever put God in a box. The quickest way to get in trouble with God is to think he's going to do something like he did it before when you were watching him. God's much too hip. Did you hear me? He really is. If the Bible had been written in 1986, it would have said God is hip, wouldn't it, brother? It would. God is continually new. And man, when you get a hold of Jesus, something begins to happen inside of you and you stay new. You can't be burned out. All if you're burned out, just begin to get a hold of Jesus and begin to look into his face and begin to receive from him. See, praise is the highest level of faith on the earth. When you as a child of God, after receiving revelation from God's word, you begin to praise him for what you've received. The Bible says that God will inhabit the praise. I looked up that word. It means he charges the air with his energy and his power. That means that everything that God represents, if you stand before the president, his power, he represents his power. If you find favor with him, then he'll give you anything he wants to. People sometimes think they have to have hands laid on them. Yes, it's good. It's good to lay hands. It's good to anoint people with oil. But Jesus said when the centurion came to him, I've never seen such faith in all of Israel. He sent his word. When you begin to praise God, God, God moves in, man. Did you ever wonder why heaven is filled with the praises of God? There's no darkness in heaven. Praise is a weapon, yeah. It's a weapon because God shows up, man. That's the reason praise is a weapon. Because the Spirit of God begins to go forth. Well, I'm only going to take a second. Sit down. I hope you can understand me all right. All of you pastors, I'll say this to you. Get involved in technology. Technology does not exist for the world. It exists for Jesus. Praise God. This is a computer that takes pictures of notes and becomes anything it wants to become. This is a 1929 Steinway Grand Piano. The Bible says that when Lucifer was given ability by God to play, that the music was created in him. Ha <laughs> ha, become a guitar. incredible music it says it's continually filled with the praises of God it's going to be harps be the big 
biggest string section and orchestra you've ever imagined in your whole life. God is going to have the greatest orchestra that has ever lived. <laughs> See, music takes you into a level of the Spirit. Music that's anointed by God takes you into God's Spirit. And there are sounds that the world has never heard that are coming down now from heaven. When musicians begin to play together in harmony, in unity, when they begin to make the same sound, and they found, form the foundation for praise. Oh, you'll begin to praise higher. Because music was given by God to be a key in praise. Now watch this. These computers are beginning to say the same thing. for a minute let God's power begin to flood your soul just begin to worship him sing to him. Jesus, let your spirit fall in this place. Open up the hearts. Let your spirit fall. Oh, let your power fall. and his computers begin to play. See, God created everything to praise him. The trees praise the Lord. The stars praise the Lord. Oh, just lift up your voices to him.
We have to get the first time I ever saw Phil. I didn't know him, and, and uh, I had been invited to speak at uh, Norval Hayes New Life Bible School, and uh, I was there. And somebody mentioned that somebody was going to play a trumpet solo. And I remember <laughs> it, it didn't register with me just well or something. I, it, I, I, I don't guess I paid any attention to it. As somebody said, to somebody going to play a trumpet solo? And I just never thought about it. And, um, and, and I turned around just as Phil got up and started to the microphone and uh, had his horn in his hand. And, and usually, I'm frightened of horn players. Now, I've been in music business a long time. And horn players are notoriously bad. 
Well, I'm not, you know, I'm not nothing against horn players, just most of them can't play. And uh, particularly horn solos. Now, I, you know, hmm. And when I, when I saw Phil go up there, I thought, oh, dear God. <laughs> and I leaned over to the person next to me, and I said, what's he going to play? And he said, Amazing Grace. I thought, well, <laughs> yeah, it is Amazing Grace. <laughs> and I really didn't plan to pay a lot of attention to it. But man. The first note woke me up, and the second and the third one just reached out and got me like that. And I mean, I was into that thing with him all the way through it. And the Lord said something to me that I believe will bless you. It, it, it opened my thinking and caused a new, uh, a new motivation to strike my spirit. It's blessed me ever since. It's been, it became, it molded into my life that morning and has become a part of my life and part of the motivation of my life ever since. While I was praising God and Phil's music was penetrating my, my spirit and I said, Lord, what is this I'm hearing? And I heard God say something. It took, took me back. It took me a, a moment to, to gather my wits spiritually to hear what God was saying. And the Lord said, He speaks trumpet. I thought, now wait a minute. What? He didn't say He speaks with a trumpet. I said, what would you say? He said, he speaks trumpet. I said, you'll have to explain. I don't know what you're trying to tell me. He said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, and he is speaking trumpet. Out of the abundance of his heart is flowing music, flowing sounds. And it motivated me and I said, well, how, how did he come to that? He said, by doing it day after day after day after day in praise and worship. Praise and worship. Praise and worship. And it vo motivated my spirit, and I wanted to just take time to publicly thank Phil for, for giving that to me and blessing my life with it. I love you forever for it, brother. Praise God.